got you recording. Wow. Yay! Okay. So first of all, because um, we're going to record this and we're going to post it and put it up on the website and you're free to do that too, Lisa, but may I make a uh, an official introduction? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my manager, Lisa Palermo. Yay! <laughs> and an introduction to you both. This is Alana Weir and Alana is uh, our... Our web meister, and she's been the mistress of um, of chaos. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking before we got started then on the um, this kind of psychotic juggle of how to stop how to stop this 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 once it's it, once the angelic night has been lit, how to stop that constant questioning into IT, when will this mm. end, when will the questions end, how much will I need to learn, mm -hmm. when will there, will there ever be an end. But I actually think people are inventing it faster than we can pose the questions. I think so too. And, it, and it's like everything can be done at the moment. Like you, we, didn't, we don't know this right this second, but in five minutes there will be something that we'll need to do yeah. and we'll Google it and there will be a way to do it. Yeah, exactly. And like, well, I never even knew I needed it for a start. And secondly, yeah. I never knew how to do it, and now I do. So it's an amazing um, exploration into self-resourcefulness at the moment, mm. I find. Yeah. Mm. yeah, exactly. And we are in a dystopian condition of, like, somewhere in the future that we hadn't even known we would be here this time. It was very unexpected. But in a sense, we're still those people, and I think I can speak for everyone present here. But, you know, that um, the... The Guardians of the Galaxy kind of guy who's got his his Walkman and he's got this yes. cassette tape and he's come from another time and a place and he's bringing almost the reverse rather than us going off and heading into this unknown somewhere. We're bringing our life and belongings with us and 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 just making this now behave like the world we want it to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm, well, you? I mean, for instance, I'm not going to wear all the fact that I'm ever going to get good in my lifetime at IT, but mm. I am enjoying the fact that, that I can bring my school of live music into a medium, give it a new context, and still discover that all the same rules apply. You still need to engage people. You still need to be kind of good. You can't be crap. Yeah. You've got to have good sound if you can really can do that, and you've got to have enough vision that you can transport people wherever they are. See. That's the one thing that really struck me coming into ISO, and I'll shut up in a minute, but is that um, I was wondering, could I transmit an emotion and soul via a camera? Mm. Yeah. Kate, okay, speaking of camera, can you still move over just a little bit? Yeah. There? Yeah. Okay. okay, good. No <laughs> oh, oh, I have to wedge myself. But do you, do, you, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. And, well, and that tribal experience of going to a live show and being with all the people and feeling that energy in the room, you know, how can you possibly try and recreate that in this situation? Mm -hmm. And it really is over to you to try and emit that energy somehow. Mm. Yes, it is. It is that? That, that's actually, that's true. And I, and I often, I'm using the template of like, you know, when they sent the first um, series of communications into space. They sent all of those, you know, and you often hear them in science fiction movies when it's ro rollicking around the galaxy and you, she loves you, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then into like Rachmaninoff's favourite piece and then and then it goes into a presenter and David Attenborough talking about Earth and, and all these things. Well, I just use that template knowing that it does get through if you mean it. Yeah. 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 And I'm finding that the, that the key carrier mm. wave, if you will, is authenticity. If you can keep it real and not f get weird yeah. Yeah. doing it. That's true because, interestingly, that authenticity seems to translate through the technology. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's, it always has. It's yeah. one of the reasons, I mean, uh, to Alana because I think she finds um, – coming into my life, certainly it's like a, it's a Pandora's box. She opens one door and there's a whole history lesson of yeah. life and music and things. Um, when Lisa and I met each other, we were on an APIA tour and it was several years before I was um, in a position to seek other management and probably several years before she was able to professionally become a, a full-time manager. And we discussed what we loved about music. Mm. We discussed what we loved about the kind of the real music, the stuff that really held 
you know, the humanness together for all of yeah. us. Which is what holds the test of time, you know, like it just. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I'd be quite satisfied, I've got to be honest, if Lisa and I, you know, we only got to relive like Groundhog Day, a series of decades together over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah, it's a weird position for me to be in as well because, like, I do so much um, in the now, social media, um, very, like, pop culture, all of that, but really my whole heart and um, history and love is well in the past. So, so it's yeah. kind of it's kind of a perfect fit coming. Well, I wonder if your family bought the seventies with them. Yeah, and kind of, <laughs> yeah. you're the you're the guardian of the galaxy. Yeah, you're yeah. holding the cassette tape of your yes. your dad's favorite <laughs> play mix playlist. Yeah, yeah well, so moving. Actually, yeah. the reason I got into what we were talking about last week, Susie Quattro, was because my dad, at the time I was listening to Justin Timberlake, and at the time that wasn't when he was producing his best work, and dad was sick of hearing it, so he stole <laughs> my um, Justin Timberlake CD and replaced it with um, a Susie Quattro CD, <laughs> just, just as like a joke. Um, and then I ended up getting like really into her more so than Justin Timberlake and ended up down that road. So it was kind of, it was almost a save, but also like a history lesson of like, okay, if we're going to go down that path, I'm going to give you an alternative before we go down that path. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of history lessons, um, Alana, Lisa is a DJ as well and played at my birthday party. And this is where we started, where, where the roads kind of split and our paths um, converged from two roads and into the same way with your dad, we made an agreement and a pact that we'd follow this road because we loved the same music. Mm. So our birthday party, take us through, Lisa, your love of music um, and then lead us to what, the playlist that you offered that day, which was kind of what galvanised our friendship. Can you? Oh, really? Did it? Yeah. Um, oh, gosh, where do I start? Um, I, I Look, my parents were musicians and so, you know, that, that was music was always around. I don't know, you know, ever since I can remember tiny little kids, I was a fan and, and I listened to the radio instantly and I'm getting a very strange Oh, yeah. Are you here? Have you got that delay too, guys? Let me go again. No, there yeah, you go. Yeah, go again yeah. now. Um, so... Yeah, yeah, so I was always, you know, be on the radio, 3XY, and, you know, always listening to everything and just, you know, consuming everything that I possibly could. And I don't know, just a music fan from, from the start. That's really all I've got. And, and, well, I can't remember when I played at your birthday party. It was. Well, I can, t I'll, I'll never forget it. I, really? You, you know, yeah, you probably opened up with a bit of, um, I don't know. Boxing music, you know, a little love is a drug. Um, <laughs> which segued into some, some. I, you know, I actually, I, I hate, I hate um, quoting your playlist because part of being a DJ is, 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 um, you sort of, you, you, you're, you're creating a conversation through music, and, but we went everywhere that day, and there was. There was a community, a very diverse community and a very diverse demographic of ages at my birthday. Like we had all the young kids were there, you know, from the ages of 17 and 18 and, and then right and through to all my mates from like 40 and, and above. Um, and there's just a certain, there's like three decades of yeah. pure gold, perhaps 1973, maybe through to 19. Maybe earlier, 68, perhaps. Yeah, late 60s. Uh, late 60s, oh, yeah. Oh, gee, it's hard, isn't it? Because, you know, I mean, I'm a massive Elvis fan too. So oh, I you know, know. You really have to go back to the 50s there. So there's just so, – the 50s is really where the rock and roll obviously yeah. started, <laughs> like a Captain Obvious. Well, part. actually, the Rolling Stones, like you mentioned, uh, Rod Stewart, those guys were merely emulating the 50s anyway, yeah. the Beatles. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it, there it is in its purest form. You know, when like when I listen to Jailhouse Rock, which sometimes some days you go, oh, I've heard this a thousand times, I don't need to hear it again. But some days you listen to that song and it's just perfection yeah. in a rock yeah. song. And and then it's a, it's a perfect punk rock song as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because it comes with all of this incredible attitude, yeah. you know. And yeah. you, you want to, like I want to transport myself back to that year that that came out and imagine what it would have felt like to have heard that song for the first time. In that era, yeah, can you yeah. even fathom what that would have been like? Yeah, and imagine, and imagine seeing like, seeing like 
Elvis doing the the um pelvic thing that he did and everything like to think. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I remember when um I had you know my back up against the wall at Westfield Shopping Centre for the first patch, <laughs> yeah. and I I lost I I nearly fainted because I wasn't breathing. Yeah. And I'm sure that girls watching Elvis, because, I mean, quite literally watching him, and, and I've been watching him recently yeah. because I wondered, I have a friend of mine who's an Elvis impersonator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and, and initially I used to think, I'd go, is that a bit strange? Like I'd <laughs> ask the question to, to just be so overwhelmed by someone that you, you commit your entire life to be. But watching Elvis lately... I, I, no, I don't think it is. I think there was something very unique about him, and I think in a way that, in in a way that certain um, uh, you know Beethoven and certain other people came through the history of music that have left their mark with us indelibly. Like Elvis had something, and I don't know, bigger than something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it's not not physical. It's like full on. I don't know. I oh, know, and it's still relevant today. Mm. Yeah. I think. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe I'm biased, but there's still something magical about that guy. Yeah. And and it, and in the end, really, he just sang other people's songs as well. So we must always remember that too. Mm. That you know, he didn't write his own songs. Mm. He was a performer, an interpreter, a vocalist. Wow. He was still incredible in that. You I know? think that there's a lot. You know, we o we overrate the um the origins of songs actually, and and I and I went and I and I'm quite guilty of this as well because for some time, you know, I was like, oh, I don't feel I'm being taken seriously unless I write my own material. But you know what? You never. It's never a guarantee that you're going to write a hit. One. Yeah. And you can get very fucking hungry waiting. Yeah. To get the acknowledgement you know, either fiscally or just even just amongst your peers um, to write a great song. And yet Neil Diamond, um, you you know, Carol King, uh, the engineers behind great songs, um, Peter um, Torp, uh, not, not Peter, Bernie Torpen, these guys elevated us into a space. And I think Steve Kilby did it for me on this recent album. All right. Yes, quite likely. And speaking of Steve Kilby, I mean, you know, for me, he's very important as well, <laughs> which is, yeah, you know, like this record, Hey Day, I, I don't remember, what year did it come out, Kate, do you remember? Must I been, must have, remember. Although I feel like I found it late because I think I found it around 83. Yeah, it's 80, anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, 85. A, 85. Well, there you go. So there you were. I, I was prescient. I saw it before it came out. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? But I mean, this is an album that I really love. I love the church, and so it's so wonderful to have been working with Steve. You know, we through you lately. Yeah. Um, oh my god. So, speaking of really special people, you know, he he is a very very unique artist. Um, but I just <laughs> love this record. You know, I've been listening to this record since 1985. Yeah. I think that's you know, if you can keep listening to something for yeah. 20, 30, 40 years. There's something in that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I agree. I think there's definitely something in it. I think it's I, – I, I don't know whether it's something about the first – the way it lays in on you. Could be that. Um, that maybe our – even our – maybe we were in our formulative years, all of our synapses um, reaching out and – exploring sensation and perception because I know that in those in the particularly between the age of 16 to 25 do you feel like that Alana that the age group was like that or that period of time was when I was like soaking up just drinking drinking yeah. it in like a, a thirsty a hungry person yeah I think for me it was probably like earlier probably like even 10 because yeah, actually like, right. we didn't do anything. No, you're right. Um, yeah. We didn't do anything on the weekends without music um, in the background. Right. So I was like, what is this thing? What's going on? Mm. But, yeah, I think 16 is when I went, no, this is who I am and this is where my taste lies. And, yes, I'll listen to things outside of here, but this is what I want to look at. Um, yeah. So I think you're right. I think from 16 is when you Well, I went to, I went to that um, – uh, recently, you know, I, I told you both I went to that forum where um, they had all the managers and Lisa and I both were on the, on a chair on a, on a group of um, managers discussing it. 
the next day, Lisa, there was a guy discussing what um, Alana is saying that he was saying that the really the key thing for uh, creating a a tribe of your own is to discover who is most like you in the world, globally speaking, for whom you could say you could say, ah, oh, people think of me in the same way they think of Hugh Jackman. Yeah. So you and I, Alana, Lisa, and you and I. I always picked bands hoping that that's how, if people knew I loved them as much as I did, yeah. they would identify me with that band. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Well, it was, that, yeah. it's very much your, um, it, it's like your label, isn't it? You know, with mm. your love Bowie, you know, back, especially in the 70s or 80s, that defined you. You yeah. know, you were a Bowie fan or you were a Susie Quattro fan or you were a Cold Chisel fan or you were a, a, a you know, a, a whatever an angels fan like those things really defined you didn't they mm. where did. now it's all very yeah um, it's a little bit more homogenous isn't it it's, you know it's, it's not so tribal and i think it's and almost it's, it's either the crowd that like rock and roll or the crowd that like triple j but then they sort of into wine and it's sort of like yeah where where yeah. are our allegiances here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, it's, I, I almost believe too. It's a bit like my. I'm very faithful to certain fashion designers, mm. and uh, and actually, and even a certain look. Like, I've looked at my photographs for the last thirty years, and you know whether I think I've been inventive. No, there's still the fucking puff sleeve and the vest, and <laughs> there's, still the, <laughs> there's still the fancy ties, and there's you know, and even when I think I'm being like, you know, I'm 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 actually exploring beyond my own comfort. Yes. Um, still singing and discovering things in repertoire. I was singing when I was 16, 17. Um, Alana, just as a, a lovely point of interest with Lisa, like she said, her parents, and this is something you'd really love because you're quite a romantic and a bit of a vintage soul. <laughs> um, her parents were like Tony Curtis, I guess, and and <laughs> and, uh, and and the who was the chick, Eva... Um, that beautiful blonde Swedish girl who went out with Peter Sellers. Um, oh. Anyway, you can imagine there's yeah. these beautiful characters of the 50s. Her yeah. mother had all those cocktail dresses and they would perform, the two of them, and take miles and miles of photographs um, of themselves performing together. Oh, so she had this whole history of the music makers. Mm. And now here you are, Lisa, now you're, you're one of the music makers. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Well, it's funny with my parents. I mean, you know, the music they made was, I suppose, kind of daggy. Like, in, you know, my dad was a trumpet player, so, you know, he started off with big band, you know, in the early 50s, big band stuff. And because, you know, the Italian and Norwegian thing, they were very continental, very Euro, and, you know, so it was all sort of, yeah, it was all kind of Italian and French songs and, you know, Besame Mucho and was Spanish, stuff like that. <laughs> but <laughs> had such a beautiful look. Like, they both have... They both had, ha, still, you know, have really good taste mm. the way they dress. Like, they, they're really stylish people. So, like, as a kid, I would go through these photos of this, these people that I didn't even know. Like, this is way before I was born. These two incredibly glamorous people, you know, my mum with these fabulous 50s and 60s frocks and my dad with, you know, bolo ties or, you know, gorgeous sharkskin suits or whatever it was. You know, the two of them were, I thought, were the aunt's pants. And it was the 80s, really, when I was you know, looking back at those photos. And you know how in the 80s, the 60s was really big? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. a lot of the bands I was listening to were kind of 60s influenced and dressing all 60s. And there I am looking at my parents in the original kind of 60s vibe. Mm. And that has really stayed with me. Like mm. that, that um, you know, that um, aesthetic, I yeah. guess. Both well, actually, uh, just for your sake, uh, I pulled out of my archives the other day. Yeah. A, the, there was an 80s designer, Catherine Hamnett. Do you remember her? She was a friend of Vivian Westwood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I noticed uh, on her arm, Alana, uh, Lisa has a tattoo of her mother wearing a dress. Oh, cool. That's a fringe dress. Yeah. I found you yeah. a, a black fringed Catherine Hamnett dress. Oh, wow. Really? Which you, you'll have to wear with a T-shirt, like, underneath, you know, because it has a little crossover and it's a bit sexy. But it, it doesn't fit me anymore. But it would to it's totally your jam. Oh my goodness! How am and, I? And I um. But it just reminded me because I know Vivian Westwood just as a, a detour, um, like you discovering your mother's fashion through the fifties and the sixties. I mean, the the punk movement, yes, was a detour from that. But 
and a deconstruction. But if you look at all of her fashion, it has only been cocktail gowns. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Only, only cocktail gowns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, how interesting. Yeah, she was an interesting machine, really, wasn't she? The processing. Sausage machine. Well, I, I think you and I are an interesting machine too, and I think we're perplexing to people because we have such a deeper relationship with music, like you say, with fashion with the, the, the 60s, the culture of it, the continental, like even the continental in itself as a phrase yeah. um, made yeah. sense to me when the two Marios got together and created that music room. Yes, yes, exactly. That embodied that whole feel, you know. Yeah. So it was, it was glamour, but it was about serious music appreciation as well. Mm. Yes. It had that perfect meeting. And that's yeah, exactly perfect. what that place was. And, yeah. you know, as we've discussed often, there has been nothing like it since. Like just the most perfect band room, you know. Yeah, I know. So um, another album. Hit us with another one of your faves, Dol. Oh, all right. Well, there you are. That's. Um, oh well. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you like Yes. Uh, you did my circuit class for that to that entire record this morning. Oh, did you really? <laughs> I mean, again, another record. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> No, 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 no. So I think I was I was nine when this came. Oh, out. It wasn't my first album by you know any stretch of the imagination. Before that, I was listening to a lot of stuff, including ABBA and you know Bee Gees and Olivia Newton John and Elvis and all sorts of stuff like that. But I remember going to Lee's Sound Lounge in Mentoring, and actually this is this is the one I bought. I bought it on cassette. So that's wow. That was wow. That's awesome. First, one of my early albums, and I bought it with my own money, but. I just still love that album, Parallel Lines, and I still love Blondie and, you know, I think that she's the absolute epitome of unrealness, mm, you know. Yeah. She's amazing and I'd still love to see them perform. I hope that, you know, I get... I think she might have had the same thing that uh, Elvis had. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and Marilyn Monroe. Yes. And it, and, it, and it wasn't to do with, the, it wasn't to do with marketing. It was just them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you know, I, it took me a while, I think, also to find that um, crop of sort of New York bands, you know, Talking Heads or Television or Ramones or whatever, you know. Yeah. Bondi was sort of like this pop door, you know. Yeah, yeah. Door that took you in there. And, you know, but yet there was this underlying sort of rebelliousness, the, the punk thing, um, which kind of really sucked me in eventually. Mm. But I think at the, at the time of Parallel Lines it was just all pop brilliance, you know. Mm. Yeah, I think we are. We always seek to find the authenticity, the truth behind things that we see. I mean, yeah, as you as you definitely get comfortable with the pop introduction, you want to know the bloodline. We were talking about that, weren't we, Alana, the other day? Um, Mark Ronson was describing his bloodlines to a few of the R and B tracks that he'd been yeah. DJing, and yeah, I mean, it, it thrills me to know. I mean, actually, in a way, and even Chrissy Hind. I mean, I've read a lot of their books, kind of harrowing, actually, the the, the, yeah. the truth of their lives. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. I yeah. mean, considering, you know, what they were doing at, and in that time, they would, you know, it was pretty bad. It's a lesson yeah. to us now, isn't it, you know, yeah. to, to us females, to, yeah. you know, to sort of really imagine what they were going through then. Mm. It's terrible, actually. But I, I think also, well, I mean, like, I, to a greater or lesser degree, I think I've got a bit of professional amnesia because I've, 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 forgotten things intentionally that of, of environments and places I put myself in as a teenager, very young teenager, desirous of rock. So, but do you think that um, it's better left forgotten or left in that time? Or do you think there's some, um, you know, value to kind of remembering that and, and, and talking about it, maybe, you know, m sort of helping the young people realise that um, you know, this is how it was before, and we mustn't forget that. Mm. It's a there's a I lesson think, learned to learn to that. I think the thing is, I don't know whether I, this is a this is how I feel about it, but I feel the world has caused us to to give different contexts to different times and places. Like for instance, um, New York will never be the same since the Twin Towers. Mm. It's become altogether a safer, more um, homogenous homogenous place and so you know the kind of the darker and the and the grittier parts of my memories um I kind of love them but I can't get reality with a lot of young kids I don't understand what it felt like yeah to feel like 
a little bit sort of um, reckless and, and, and dangerous and also actually embrace it. I think we are, we, we're definitely putting a lot of our culture in cotton wool these days. Yeah. I really feel that. I mean, I don't think you, you, you're a rare exception to the rule, Alana, at your age because you're just a bit more of a punk. But for the general population, they're, they're like, they're very middle class in the yeah. way that what they expect from life. Yeah, and very much like not looking past what is right in front of them and what is yeah. given, like, spoon fed to them. Um, yeah. And I think. I think I think not always is that a bad thing. Like sometimes that's a good thing because you can open up a conversation and it really starts moving things. But I think there's a lack of questioning, um, which yeah. I've really noticed. And recently. romance, actually. Yeah, and romance. Uh, yeah. From a lack because, I mean, of actually, you know, romance is in itself something that takes a great deal of courage to engage in. And let's face it, you know, it took a few clubs and maybe a few beers to get into bed with a few blokes. <laughs> when I was the kid. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> well, my mum's watching this, so I'm giving nothing away. I'm not old enough yet. <laughs> anyway, I remember, though, chasing that dream, going down to the bottom line and various other places down in New York, right down into the, the Lower East Side and the Bowery and the various uh, clubs and I, you know, and and I, I, I felt and I've, and I've lived in a lot of those lofts and I've been hungry in New York mm. and it's, and it's shit, mm. right? Yeah. But it was, would I, would I, do I have any regrets or would I want to do it, have done it any other way? No way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And same for you, I'm sure, Lisa. So next album, what else has you got? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> so, ooh, all right. Well, here's another. I've got a few Australian things to, you know, to start with. The Hoodoo. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. just absolutely love this record. I love that record it's, too. It's, it's brilliant. And, I mean, also I found the artwork absolutely fucking unreal. I, I know. Like, yeah. Vibe. I mean, really. Oh, yeah. Think, I think this encouraged me to start collecting plastic dinosaurs for a while. Is that the same guy? <laughs> Again, it's that. Huh? Is that the same guy who designs um, mental as anything stuff? Oh, um, Martin Cha? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Or is, is that the one you mean? Yeah, otherwise. No, you're thinking, no, I know the guy. He's the um, the guy that does, all, yeah, no, I yeah. don't think it is. No, I think it was a bit before that time. It's um, Yanni, Yanni Stumbles. Wow. Oh, okay. Do you remember Yanni Stumbles, Kate? I don't know who he is. No, I don't know Yanni Stumbles, but that's I, genius. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at the colour tone. I know, isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Yeah, so and cute. they are gorgeous. They're um, fabulous. They're, and still, an unreal band, like mm. just a great rock band. And also, yeah. you know, going to that Bloodlines thing, you know, going, listening to some of the stuff that influenced these guys, whether it was the Stooges or the New York Dolls or 60s Garage Punk, you know, yeah. these guys brought it to me and to many others, of course, you know, so yeah. I go back and go, oh, what are they listening to? What's Let's All Turn On about, you know, which yeah. just constantly yeah. references all this culture from the 50s and yeah. 60s, yeah. you know. Yeah. The way you go in and you find all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What's that phrase he says too? I'm quite, I just love it, waking up, I'm tired of waking up tired. What was that? Uh, yeah. From, is that, where it's on that record, isn't it? I, I think that's, so yeah. tired. Is that right? Go well, on, sing it. Of waking up tired. Uh, what's the um? Oh, anyway, I just—it's true. I hear it three X Y. I hear it blasting out <laughs> that particular record. Um, we had a station wagon, of course, and nothing was automated. You had no phones. If you were headed down to the coast, that was it. You were off. Oh, you were yeah. off grid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. There was nothing, and with one cassette tape, and it was a Hootie Gurus. Oh, yeah. no. And everyone singing at the top of your lungs, you know. Um. And then I, I fortunately, and I'm really glad that I never really got to meet a lot of them, although I did see Brad, who I'm just saying just a little bit hot. No, no. I had a massive crush on crush, crush on <laughs> I love the way all about, well, at least my hand goes to my cheek and to yours. <laughs> and I think, oh, no, oh, dear. Well, I remember seeing them live yeah. and just going, what an epic guitarist. I mean, Dave, obviously, what a great singer. Oh. And songwriter. I, I'm, I'm, I'm songwriter. I mean, hands down, as, you know, he is like the David Byrne of our generation of Australian culture. Yeah. You know, so much to say and and so and and himself, 
quite a um you know he he himself was struggling with some many things many deep so and unresolved issues yeah mm. yeah what i love about the gurus is that they've they remained really true to themselves and who they are which i think would be quite difficult to do as a band you know yeah. as as a disparate collection of you know four people i mean I, they've yeah. had they've only had one or two lineup changes in their time but you know what they are today is not very far from what they were when they released their debut record, yeah. you know. Well, you know, if you're on a good thing, you know. Mm. Yeah, uh, but yet it's still kind of relevant and fresh. Mm. Yeah, it is. You oh, I, I totally agree. I actually think Australian music period has been incubating and and actually has only just now come to where its full richness is being appreciated versus other um, continents. Like, I, there is an actual distinct sound to Australian yeah. music. Yeah. yeah. But it's taken 30 years for people to actually rate it. That's how fucked up we are as Australians. We're like, yeah. uh, uh, the devotees, we all, re- we all yeah. rate it. Yeah. And now it's needed another whole generation. And I guess it was the same. Look, I discovered Led Zeppelin and and um, a whole series of bands, 70s bands, the second time around. Mm-hmm. Like, clearly, I wasn't born during the Beatles. Got it? <laughs> you just cut out. What were you saying? I, yeah. Hello. You just cut no, out. Just what saying, were you saying? You just cut out. Um, I was just explaining that the um, the discovery of something second time round makes it twice as important to you. Yeah. I think it gives it much richer and much more value, and you feel that you know it's some. It's like some, uh, like a archaeological dig, mm. and you discovered it. That's yeah. so true. Yes, that, that's very true. Like when I was a kid that, you know, that age, sort of 13, 14, 15, whatever, I went back to the 60s a lot, you know, and I found The Who and T-Rex and the yes. Easy, all of those bands and who, you know, I, I still love, uh, I, I love a lot. But it is different when you're there, isn't it, as opposed to when you do the arche- yeah. archaeological dig, mm. you know. Yes, it is. Different relationships with that music. It is. Uh, I feel like it's like... Um we put it into a realm of something that's kind of um, mystical, yeah. whereas when you're in it and living it, yeah. it's just you can smell the perspiration, you can taste the, the sour cider on your breath, you can, you, you know. You can see Brad Shepherd's tight black jeans. <laughs> yeah, and the part where a little bit's worn away and you see the colour of his jocks underneath. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on, the guitar was in front of that bit. Oh, was it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> giving everything away in these chats, Kate. <laughs> Actually, girls, can we do this as a volume series? Because I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to wrap this up, and I actually think we've so much more. We've only just touched the surface. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, for sure. No, we could. Can we make this a, just a little bit of a weekly catch up? Because I, oh. I constantly love reminding uh, myself even why music. Yes. You know, and why Australian music is so dear mm. to me. Mm. Yeah. I, would, I would love it if we could each ha- have a, have an album. Yeah, okay. let's so do that. Let's I want that. your answer to my Goody Gurus. Okay. Oh, okay. Done. Yeah. Sounds good. So cool. Next week awesome. we'll eat. And Alana, you can talk more next time because now that we've got just got to... <laughs> <laughs> Now that you're introduced and you know one another, you'll have more to talk about. This yeah, time. I feel like we'll get along very well. <laughs> I'm sure right. you will. So we'll yeah. each have... Yeah. I'll see going... you later tonight. Are we going... And I'll see you through the week as we start yeah. to set, set up for um, Vicky and Linda. 